Hello everyone and welcome back to another prayer video on the channel. My name is Antoine and today we have an iPad 7th generation model A2197 10.2 inch with no touch problem. Now this one came from eBay and in description said that the iPad was opened and they tried to change the touch uh, digitizer but with no results. So now the, visu the usual uh, simple diagnostics which is trying two different touch sensors to make sure that the problem is not in the touch digitizer. I'm going to uh, speed forward a little bit. Okay, the phone boot up, uh, the iPad booted up, and as you can see, the same results. So I guess that the problem could be in the motherboard. So let's jump and see how the board uh, is uh, or looks like under the microscope. Let's go. Here you can see the touch sensor connectors, which they are uh, two connectors, uh, each one function 50% of the sensor. And of course, very important to note that sometimes when you have a bad looking connectors or connector, you need to change it if you have a glitchy sensor or something like that. But in our case, the touch is not functional, so uh, like at all. So the first thing to check is the connectors and measure them with our uh, multimeter. So now after we remove the connectors and everything looks alright, uh, so let's just go and remove the bracket that uh, protects the Touch IC and see what are we dealing with. So this is our beloved Touch IC and make sure to check around the IC because those elements are connected to it. And just to make sure that we don't have any kind of short circuit. And of course check uh, the FLs, they are very important. And if everything is okay we're going to go and remove the IC and replace it with a new one. And also, just a small uh, PS, I'm going to remove the IC while the board is still in the house. And of course, this is not recommended, but it's the first time I'm doing this and I'm curious about the temperature. But again, I'm going to cover everything around the IC so that we don't damage anything. And especially uh, around the board and near the battery. So we finished our work and for the test I'm speed forwarding for the non-important parts, connecting the uh, sensor, the screen and most importantly the battery and now we are waiting for the iPad to boot up, here we go and let's see, hmm, interesting, sensor is still not working. So yeah, I guess uh, the results are still the same. We don't have a functional touch sensor for this iPad. 
It's very strange. Um, so I guess we will need to go uh, even deeper in the solution for this problem. So let's just disconnect everything and again go back. Uh, go back under the microscope. Very interesting. Let's go. So now I guess we're stuck with only one option, which is checking the touch AC and measure the pads on the IC itself. Maybe there is a shorter disconnection between the IC itself and the CPU or power IC. And also, uh, as an option, we can measure the output of the voltages, which I'm not going to do right now because the most logical thing to diagnose right now is to remove the IC and measure uh, with dive mode because if we have a... Uh, bad looking connector or there's a disconnection with one pad from the connector it will not lead to a non-functional touch but just uh, part of the sensor so we clean the board where is my multimeter here we go and uh, now we're going to measure the pads which are the pads on the board after we remove the touch ac and we'll begin with the first line from the top and uh, going through all the all the lines or all the pads individually of course I like to measure my my pads like that. <laughs> so here we go. The first line of the board. Here we go. And of course, uh, if you don't have the resistor map for this board, you can always use a donor board, aka other working or non-working board, and check the resistance with diode mode. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. And this is the board that I removed the IC sensor from it, and also had a CPU ball, which is an iCloud one. So it doesn't matter, I guess everything is working okay. So I just noticed that we have we have an OL pad or we don't have a resistant on this pad, which is the eighth pad. Now let's just go on the other board and check if we have a resistance with tire mode again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, here we go. The eighth pad, we have a resistance. Uh, this pad goes to this resistor, which is near the CPU. Let's just measure if we have a connection between the resistor and the pad itself. Just found the pad. Yep. And as you can see, we have a connection, but we don't have a connection from the resistor itself, which I guess it goes to the CPU. Uh, but again, let's... Uh, Go and measure. We don't have any measurement comes from the resistor. And this is the other board, which as you can see, we have resistance from the resistor itself. So I guess now we're going to jump to the ZXW and the schematics to uh, check this line. So um, let's go now for the explanation. It will be a little long. So here is my ZXW and here is uh, my schematics and by the way if you're wondering where can I find those schematics for free you can check out my video about downloading all the schematics for iPhone and iPad so this is the iPad 7 Wi-Fi version 10.2 inch 2019 iPad schematics and now we're going to search for the U3000 which is the Touch IC and as you can see we have two separate um, diagram for the Touch IC itself as you can see system 1 of 2 and system 2 of 2 uh, the first one is the inputs and outputs, and those are the power or the voltages, as you can see, PP 15 volt touch filter, etc. etc. And uh, we are going to focus on the eighth pad on the board, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's called SPI to grape SCLK. Uh, SPI stands for the serial uh, peripheral interface and grape. I guess uh, Apple um, you know, like to call their uh, lines some weird, uh, uh, some weird names like Homer for the Turtle IC on the iPhone 7, and etc. And the SLK it's an engine clock that goes to this little resistor over here and then goes to uh, the CPU, which is output from the CPU itself and. Um, I removed the resistor and both sides are uh, OL or there is no resistance on both sides. So that means that we have a disconnection in the CPU itself, between the CPU and the line for the resistor. So now let's just go and search for the SPI underscore grape underscore SLK on the schematics. 
and here we go as you can see it is an output from the U0700 which is the CPU goes from this to the resistor and then goes to the uh, the touch IC and we have a disconnection and if we don't have the signal or line is disconnected between the CPU and the touch uh, then we don't have one of the signals which is obviously you need all the signals between both ICs uh, obviously so uh, the diagnostics, two important diagnostics A, uh, we have a disconnection in the line SPA underscore grape underscore SCLK which is again a clock line B, those iPads has a very bad soldering on the CPU they just basically take a CPUs from iPhone 7 and 7 Plus from for the 2018-2019 models iPads and they call it budget iPads and don't get me wrong I don't have any problem with working with those iPads it's just Beside that those models have uh, very bad soldering uh, on, I don't know, any clock line on and every IC has a communication with the CPU. So anything stops working, uh, it because uh, due to a bad soldering from the manufacturer on the CPU. So I guess uh, welcome our new uh, audio codec uh, disease. So obviously we are going to remove the CPU now and if everything is looking okay by looking okay I mean only gray pads then we are going to rebuild the CPU and test our work. Of course this video is not about how to remove CPU so don't expect a lot of explanation about removing the CPU it's just to fix the no touch problem and of course expect a separate video about CPU removing and rebuilding in the future.
of the soldering CPU and always check uh, the board if it's booting up. After the CPU soldering, I'm going to connect my DC power supply. Okay. And now I'm just going to connect the cable to the charging port and see the current on the DC power. See how many amps. If you get the 040, 2040, that means that it's uh, booting from the NAND. As you can see, the iPad is booting up. We have the 040 and everything is okay. And now let's go and continue to solder the uh, HIC. But before that, uh, as you can see, we have again a measurement on the resistor from the both sides. That means that again, we had a disconnection between the CPU and the resistor line. The also the resistor goes to the touch AC to the line SPI grape underscore grape underscore SCLK. Now for the final test, I'm going to speed it forward, the connectivity process which is connecting the sensor and the, uh, the screen. I guess if everything is working okay, that means that we had a problem with the CPU and as you can see, I already activated the iPad and let's go and test everything, the sensor, the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi. I'm just like testing them after the uh, CPU reball. And I guess, uh, yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If the video was helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for additional content in the future. As always, stay safe and have a good day. I'll catch you guys in another repair video. Peace out.